cool. So in today's video, I will be using this, well, not this image. <laughs> I'll be using this image from the photographer Adrian. Uh, he's one of the photographers on one of the Facebook pages I'm part of. He was struggling to separate the hair from the background using GIMP and I haven't used GIMP in a long time, but I figured let me give it a shot uh, to try and help a fellow photographer out. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go from specifically around the hair, so don't worry about the rest of her body, I know it looks terrible, but we're going to go from her, from there, to there where we cut the hair out. So you can see sort of the before and after and how much detail we can get in there. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and thank you Adrian for letting me use your image in the video. Much appreciated. I hope this helps you because that's who it's meant to help. Let me get straight into it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this lady out of this background. This is actually a difficult image to work with. Uh, the colour difference between her hair and the background is minimal at best. Um, looking through the channels there's really nothing useful unfortunately. I'm going to show you how I did it and you can take it from there. So the one thing I do remember about GIMP is that you always want to duplicate because it just makes your life easier. So I'm going to duplicate the selected layer and just to make my life easier as well I'm going to create a group and stick it in the group. So let's call this um, background change. I'm going to make another duplicate so that I can muck about with the duplicate because I want to keep the original untouched. So we've created a duplicate, then I'm going to go to, let's see, colors. Now we need to try and create a difference between the foreground where, so this area, where her hair is and the background. That's the most important part. The other stuff's actually kind of easy, um, comparatively, because, uh, you know, it's got a lot of sharp edges. So we can really just cut along those or just mask very carefully. The hair, however, is not as easy. So I'm going to go to... Let's do curves. I'm going to pull that curve all the way up and make a gigantic S-curve and see if that brings some of that detail into her hair. So zooming into her hair a bit, we can see because she's blonde and the background's also a similar kind of grayish color, it, it kind of works. <laughs> Could be better. Let's see. Mm. Let's try something. Okay, that's I think as close as we're gonna get it. So when you're roughly happy with it, press OK. So we've got that beneath it and we've got this on top. Now I'm really just playing, so let's see what happens if we invert this image. So I'm going to colors, invert. Okay, now that's useful. We have the background a lot darker. We've got a better outline around her hair and all these finicky little areas. But the color thing is still a bit of an issue. So I'm gonna go to colors, desaturate, and let's see what works best. So what I'm looking at here between these settings is the one that gives me the biggest difference between the two. Looking at this, it looks like it might be a lightness. <laughs> yeah, mm, maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to go with lightness for this particular image. It'll vary from image to image, so don't stress too much about this. Now, what we're going to do next is click on the image below this image, and you're going to give it a layer mask. So you right click. You go scroll down to add layer mask, okay? And I'm just going to say, let's say white, because we don't want to change it or anything. So now with, with this black and white layer selected, see the little white border, it says it's selected. I'm going to press control C, and then I'm going to select the layer mask and control V. Doesn't stick it there immediately you can see we've got this floating selection. That's normal, don't stress. Okay, so you right click on the floating selection, then click on anchor layer. All that does is stick it into your whatever you have selected. 
So if we hide this mask and we hide the bottom layer, we can see we've kind of already got sort of this rough jobby going on. It's not perfect yet. Take some time. So next step is I want to see this image against the white background. The whole point is we're trying to put it on a white background, right? So create a new layer just over here, this little icon. Layer, I want the foreground color, which is this white color at the moment. Press OK. And I'm just putting it in the group, clicking and dragging it. Okay. So this gives us an idea of what's going on in this image. So we can see if I zoom in that a lot of her face and body are also white. Okay, so now if we look at, so you hold on Alt and click and you can see the layer mask itself, which allows us to work on the layer mask. Now remember, whatever's white reveals, whatever's black hides what's on the layer. Okay, so we can see that area is actually a part of her hair. If I look at this, okay, it's just very light. So I'm going to click on my layer mask and just color it in manually over here. I'm trying to keep away from the edges though. So select my brush tool, make sure white is my foreground color. My opacity is set to 100 and I want a relatively smallish size. Uh, the hardness of the brush is quite hard. That's what I want. Okay, so I'm just going to color in the obvious things like her face. Make the brush a bit bigger. Zoom out. Color in some of the obvious areas. Okay, so I'm going to. Mm, Okay, I'm just going to show you what I do around the hair. Then I'm going to pause and color this in. <laughs> and then I'll show you what I do next. Let me first show you the hair. So it's really nothing too fancy. Let's just hold Alt, click on the layer mask. This isn't going to be absolutely perfect every time. Um, you'll get something close, you know, and that's really the best you can hope for. It's really difficult with hair like, you know, that's blonde against a light background. So let's make the brush a lot smaller. And just going to manually fix up some of these areas. On the mask. With GIMP, really don't be afraid to get in there, you know, you're gonna have to from time to time. So you can see those really light blonde areas where there's no way in hell our mask was gonna get that, so don't stress, just color it in. So I keep that bottom layer um, showing just that I can see where I'm coloring this in because the last thing you want is to kind of color everywhere and then ruin the effect. Okay, so I'm going to carry on doing this all around her hair. Oh, um, the other thing is if you can see like areas like here where it's quite light but we can't really do much about it, drop your opacity down really low and go on this area. See what the difference it makes. Right. Pop the opacity back to 100 and brush size a bit bigger.
Okay, so I have finished with most of her hair and as you can see here, I go through the sort of before and after. And obviously there's a lot more work we need to do on this, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, but that covers basically the hair, okay? Uh, if you want to see how to do the rest, please refer to part two, just to do a quick recap what we did. We made a duplicate of this layer by right clicking and going down to duplicate layer. We did that twice. We grouped those layers by coming down here where that little, I don't know, file image, I guess. Uh, we click it, drag the two grouped layers into that file just so that we can, you know, flip between the before and after. I took the top image and I went to colors up here, down to curves, click on that, and basically just played with the curves to get a nice clear line over most of the hair. Then what I did was I came down here to the, the main image, I right clicked again on the image, uh, scroll down to apply layer mask, which I'm not going to do now, oh sorry, add layer mask. <laughs> Um, add layer mask and then with the layer mask you want to add this image so you select this image go control C select the layer mask control V oopsie you'll get that floating layer you right click on the floating layer and you click on anchor layer and that will then put it on your mask okay then all I did was added a blank layer by going down to create new layer, filled it with white, stuck it underneath. We want a white background so that's all we want. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how we cut the hair out. Then all I did was go back to my layer mask, press alt, click on the layer mask and just modified it as I saw fit. So like here I can see there's actually a couple areas that I missed by doing that. So just colour those areas in, just to make sure we got the bulk of her hair. Okay, and then you can see we have quite a nice detailed lay mask around her hair. And yes, I know it won't be perfect perfect around some of the areas, but it will still be a lot better than if you tried to hand draw every single element. Cool, so stick around for video 2 where I just cover how I went about cutting out the rest of her body, or part two. I think it should be called part two. Uh, yeah, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day slash evening slash I don't know what time you're watching this video. Dasha out. I hope you have had fun and I hope you learned something. Cheers. Bye.